Hi, my name is Julio Anta. I'm 65 years old. I've been a Christian for 33 years. You'll understand I literally accepted the Lord before, but I don't consider that time. So what I want to talk to you guys about is my testimony, how I came to Christ, how I went from the weakest person ever, you know, as a kid, low self-esteem, from becoming agnostic, that's believing there's some God, but losing my faith in, in, in Christ, to where I'm at today as a Christian, and I'm not going to go deep into it because I don't want to make this too long, but man, after, after I really accepted the Lord and became born again, how my life changed is amazing. Actually, I have I written two, in two books. This one was nine years ago. There is a part where I talk about a little deeper about um, how I accepted the Lord and where that I'm going to talk about in a few. And then in this book, I was blessed. It's a bestseller to be one of 21 men, Christian men, that wrote their testimony. This one's a lot deeper, way deeper. Um, than what I'm going to talk today. So you could get them on in Iron Patriot Bianta.com or any of our websites. So how did it all start? Well, as a small, as a child, I was sick. Um, had my appendix taken out. I'm not even sure. In Cuba, that's where I was born. Had to be before I was five because I came to the U.S. about three and a half weeks before my fifth birthday from the communist oppressed country of Cuba. That's why, you know, I'm very politically incorrect. I'm totally against communism, socialism, anything like that. And another day we'll talk about how, well, it wasn't my study, how a pastor once gave a study, how communism, socialism, and Satanism is the same concept. But that's for another video. So what happens? As a kid, like I said, I was the last one picked. And... um so I wanted to change, started martial arts. I was that kid that quit everything at 13 with judo. Then, long story short, I didn't train enough in certain martial arts. I mean, I used to fight a lot and usually win. I started losing fights, decided to lift weights. So that's where my life started changing, but before Christ. So now... I was indoctrinated like most kids are today. I'm, I'm, I told you I'm 65. I'll be 66 this year in April. And um, the indoctrination started way back. I'm not going to explain exactly, maybe in another video, how I feel it start. You know how it started in the schools and the media and all that. But I was indoctrinated by junior high, which is middle school today. I became very liberal. My dad used to call me, this is a Christian thing, I'm not going to say the word, but he would call me a beep beep communist. And I just thought the old man was crazy. Still loved him. So, like I said, I was indoctrinated by the news, by the school system. Got worse in college. By now, I was already, I can't tell you when I stopped believing. I think it might have been around high school. I stopped believing in God and Christ. And um, it had to do with, first, you know, I didn't want to get, as a kid, I didn't like confessing to the priest. So I, did, I stopped going to church. My mom, very spiritual person, was once going to be a nun until my dad got in the way and married her. So anyway, I come from that, that family. My dad was in a santero, you know, Cuban witchcraft, but he did have those saints and smoked the cigars and put coins and all that. So that was my background. Both of them were like that. My mom, my sister, always going to church. I didn't. So now, all of a sudden, I'm built. I am starting to live the life that I like because I was a very shy person. As a kid, I saw those um, in the back of the comic books, a manliness, you know, that bicep, mine's tiny compared to theirs, huge arms, and how you could become like them. So now I'm a bodybuilder, getting built, decide to join the Marine Corps, grew up on watching war movies and westerns. So I joined the Marine Corps, 
I was still I was still pretty much indoctrinated into the liberal stuff, but for whatever reason, I enjoyed all these movies and 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 joined the Marine Corps. That was a culture shock. The hardest thing I've done in my life still today. Nothing like it. All my black belts, all my bodybuilding accomplishments and other sports I've done nothing. Marine Corps boot camp. Why? Because that was at once that skinny kid and now built his body somewhat. And um, I still never ran. So what happens? I meet this guy that I consider a delinquent. Hey, who knows? Who knows if he changed? I've never heard from him again, again since the 70s. That had been in the Marine Corps, but had gotten out on a discharge medical because of a knee problem. And we become friends. And he had gone in because at that time you could go in instead of going to prison. So he tells me, first start running. I ran one time with him, maybe a quarter mile or half a mile. He says, you, you're going to be running like crazy. Two, the first thing you're going to want is when they give you that little Bible. I laughed. I knew this guy. You know, he had, you know, prison and didn't go to prison, went to the Marine Corps instead, but that type of lifestyle. And he hadn't changed, by the way. I don't, as far as I know, he didn't seem like he changed. Don't want to judge him. So I laugh. I didn't get a Bible. He goes, I'm serious, man. You're going to see, man. I don't even meet my drill instructors yet. I walk in there, the, those of you that are Marines, those yellow footsteps, the yelling, the screaming starts, the whole ordeal. Boy, it was hell. So I do something. I'm waiting for the Bible. I read the Bible daily. Even when we had fire watch, which is when, you know, every you do two hours every few days. You know, like guarding the in boot camp and walking, I would be with my flashlight reading my Bible. I start going to church and um, I make a promise to God. Never make a promise to God. We can't keep them and it, it's unbiblical. I make a promise to God that if I don't get recycled, recycle is sent back. Oh, I was always in the back. You know, Marines, politically incorrect still today, even though they're trying to change them. I wasn't fat. I went in there decently built. I left there. I went in like at 160 something pounds. I think it was just 160 or 159, 160. I left, I think it was like 129. So they would call me Fatty Annie because my last name is Anta. And um, they would say, it was me, a power lifter, you know, the strong guy. And all the fat people in the back dying. Uh, Fatty Annie, we're going to send you to the fat farm. That's what they call it. To get you in shape, to then restart your training. So, man, I would pray. Long story short, I made it. Went to church every day while I was there. And um, went to Catholic churches, the one I knew from my family. And then the moment I graduated, never went to church again for years. Broke my promise to God. At least he knows there were sinners and I was very naive and ignorant, even though I was reading the Bible. So what happens now? I believe. But this was 19, December 1980, I started believing. So you could say 33 years, that's longer. No, I don't count it. It's like some people tell me I've been a Christian this long, but then they backslid for a few years. No, you weren't. Because if you backslid, that means all that time, I don't count it. So anyway, what happens? I'm not even going to say I backslid because I didn't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. What are the things, the iniquities that I, that I was doing and I wanted and the sin, I still want it. So what happens now? I come back. And I'm not going to church, but I believe. Positive, I believe. I just don't know. Like so many people that I know. Oh, yeah, I believe in Christ. I'm a Christian, but I don't go to church and I don't this, I don't that. No, that's not a relationship with Christ. So now all of a sudden, this had happened to me in the Marine Corps before. I don't know why I freaked out. Maybe it was God's will. I, it, I go to the restroom and blood comes out. Man, that's happened so many times. 
and it a lot of t and you know it's just it it cuts a vein or something, but I freaked out. I turned on the TV, accepted the Lord, which I really didn't because if I did, I wouldn't have backslid. Um, it's my opinion. What I'm saying this is not that it's concrete biblical, but I feel that you know I wasn't um well I haven't gotten to the point sorry so what happens now is I accept the Lord and then I call my good friend bodybuilding friend we were friends since around 1977 we're still friends Ricardo Velez and Ricardo about six one six two. 17, 18 inch arms, you know, it was one of a close friend that I admired. He had become a Christian. And um, so I tell him and he invites me to church. I go to church for three months with him. I think it was a Baptist church. Um, nice people, everything was good, but I was not born again. In my heart, I missed what as a kid, I want it. What did I want as a kid? And I was accomplishing was built big muscles, competitive bodybuilder, martial arts. I had done martial arts on and off. When I was bodybuilding, I didn't do as much martial arts because I couldn't keep my weight and I didn't want to lose weight. So Ricardo takes me. We start hanging out. We even start preaching in front of clubs. I stopped going to clubs, stopped hanging out with my other friends. They weren't Christian. Um, I'm not dating anybody. I'm trying to follow very legalistic what the Bible says, even though we know that we can't, we want to, but that's why Jesus came. So, as you can see, was something that I skipped. About 90% of teenagers eventually leave the church and never come back. Why? Well, the indoctrination. I said they never come back. That I don't know. They leave. A lot of them do come back. Because what you, you know, the, of the teachings. But Satan is out to divide the family. Which he could divide you. Divorce is division of the family. Your kids, or you not wanting to talk to your kids because they think different. Division of the family. The separation from from God of children or whoever is the vision of the family because the other members are still doing it and now you want to separate from them but I'm going off course, sorry. I just wanted to bring up how Satan is working today. It didn't just start today. It started years back when I was a kid but it's worse today. But back on track, sorry about that. So I'm there. And then one day I'm looking and I'm seeing, I keep on seeing some of the other Christians, friends that I met. Some of them weren't even bodybuilders. Um, a lot of my bodybuilding friends became Christian at that time. And then I'm seeing that they're sinning and then constantly going back. God, forgive me. God, forgive me. Started to feel a little turned off. But again, had nothing to do with God. That was my immaturity of looking at them and not God. So these two in particular that I had met, or one day, they go, man, I feel like going to a club. Let's go. I go, you know what? I've been feeling this for a while. So all of a sudden, they change their mind. And I go, screw this. And I went. Before that, I jumped the gun a little bit. Um, my best friend in the Marine Corps that they call Psycho. That was crazy, actually. He wasn't crazy. He acted crazy. But he was my best friend. My, I was in the reserves. My parents spoke to him. My mom spoke to him and he came to talk to me. And he was correct. He came and he, because, oh, when I was in the in the camp, in the, in the drills where we would meet, I started for those three months all by myself sitting under a tree in our free time, not to do the things Marines do. So he comes and he tells me how sad my parents are. How, how can I, you know, leave my faith? How can I be following those crazy, which they were. I was watching some of those, not, okay, again, I don't want to judge, but some of these um, Christian TV shows are just kind of not the stuff I believe in today. And at that time I was watching that and all that. So 
Now, the church I was going to was a good Baptist church. So he starts telling me how, and he goes, look at you. I know you're sad. You want to hang out with us. You're just standing there. You always look sad. And he was right. So that day, going back, I start going to clubs again. So the Bible says it, that when when you get when when demons are driven out, you get close to God, and you separate from them. Legions of demons come back. I think that's what happened to me, because now I was getting more and more of the sin that I wanted. Okay, so now I compete. I'm a competitive bodybuilder, man. I was still shy as hell, and now the girls are coming to me. Wow, I remember one that I dated that actually was at the bodybuilding show that I was competing in. And I was walking on the beach and they called me and they said, we saw you compete. So now, as I was saying, I'm a competitive bodybuilder. I'm more popular. You know, I'm having premarital sex a lot. Not a lot, but, you know, I was having it. And... um <clears throat> With all that happening is what I wanted. So now, one of my friends that was a bouncer at a club, John Mandry, rest in peace, and he did that after I heard. I took him to church, and then later I found out he went back with the Lord, and he passed away, and he's, you know, saved, so I will be seeing him in heaven. At that time, my best friend was John Mandry, and um, John tells me he wanted to start a bodybuilding show. There was George Prince, an incredible bodybuilder, had one similar to what he was doing. And that Infinity would let us start there. So now we start a bodybuilding show in clubs. We even did it at parties. At um, We did it at the Collegiate Nationals Bodybuilding uh, Championship. And um, so we start doing these shows. I get all my bodybuilding friends. We get girls dancers and to do the acts with us and man now I think that I'm a celebrity <laughs> you know it's the way I'm feeling I always wanted that fame so we're doing these shows and I am living the life that I wanted to live as a kid which obviously is not a Christian lifestyle I was totally wrong because I had not been born again and really accepted Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Even though I did do the, did it on TV and all that. So what happens? Everything goes bad now. So, first, I dislocate, I'm in a, at, a, at a martial arts tournament and I had terrible technique. Now I was doing both. We've even added martial arts because then I started doing the show with a um, a martial arts champion, Juan Bofield, JCB. I started doing the shows with him. And now we're adding more martial arts. They had good martial arts. I did it. I was studying under them too. So <clears throat> I go to a tournament. And I'm obviously throwing bad punches. I dislocate one shoulder partially. Boom, I put it back in place. Well, he falls back in place. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah. I keep on fighting. I dislocate the other one. It comes back in place. I keep on fighting. I lose the match. Three to two. Even if I would have won, I couldn't have kept on going. When I go to take my gi off, I can't take it off. My world is like, my facade was my body. It's like, what? I am depressed. I hear from doctors, from therapists, oh, you should never do martial arts or lift weights again because eventually you won't move your arms. I take off, I don't know how long I took off from the gym. I go back, I'm, I'm now trying to work out. There's so many exercises I can't do. I'm losing my body and I'm not feeling good. Still have the bodybuilding show, but I'm not, I'm not part of it. I'm just leading it. So now I have this girlfriend, Nutty. Um, she would say she was a white witch. How did a guy that, I still believe in Christ, 
I just wasn't born again, end up with somebody that says she's a white witch. So what happens is her relationship isn't as good. Um, then I find out, she literally tells me, we break up, she literally tells me she was seeing this other guy, it was a friend, but not a close friend, that would do my show, my bodybuilding show. And I should have taken the hints of the things she would say to me. Um, so now, the body's going away, lose the girlfriend, forgot, got fired from my job, worked at a liquor store. By the way, I didn't drink much. I rarely drank. I didn't know much about liquor, but I worked at a liquor store. And um, <clears throat> she comes in before we broke up with an argument, argues with me. Obviously, get fired. I was upset. Why did they fire me? Today, I would have fired me <laughs> easier, quicker. Because in your jobs, a big argument with your girlfriend. After that is when um, I find out that she was all this uh, for a while, you know, seeing this guy that did our show. So it seems like all this thing, you know, I'm going through hell. It didn't finish there. My car blows his engine. So now I don't have a car. Don't have a job. Obviously stop the bodybuilding show. I feel, I remember, I got to look up the date one day. It was the Monday after the 4th of July in 1986. So, wow, I'm going really long in time. So I'm going to have to, let's um, take it from here a little shorter. So I asked my mom, my, oh, by all this time, my mom was going to a Christian church. My dad broke the, the idols he had. And that's another story of a miracle in his life when he broke them, which we'll, I'll do in another video. And they're going to a Christian church. So I asked her to go. I go. And um, she had told me about this, this cute Asian or Chi Cubans go Chinese, whether you're Japanese, Chinese, whatever. Girl. I had never dated anybody my mom suggested. And man, there were so many beautiful girls that their, their friends, that their mothers or fathers, their mothers or friends of my mom that would wanted me to date them. And some even told me, when are you going to take me out? And I wouldn't because I felt, what if something negative? I was very shy. If we break up, something negative happens. So this time I go and um, I meet that cute Chinese girl. She wasn't Chinese. She just looks at... Um, She's Hispanic, and first we became friends. And long story short, I wasn't even that attracted to her. It was just we were friends. It was like magic. Boom, God hit me one day. We were in the youth group, and she was saying she was supposed to lead it that day, and God told me she's the one. I had prayed to God, the next woman that comes to my life, I want her to be my wife. I'm tired of the dating. I'm tired of the clubs of all the hurt. And I had prayed to God since I was a kid to marry a virgin. Guess what? God did it for me. Married a virgin. Never dated, went out with anybody else. Never cheated on her. Never been with no one before we got married or, or after. And we've been married 32 years. So things start changing. Remember, um, Pastor Bobby Cruz, which is the apostle of our church now, his son Bobby Jr., which is one of my closest friends. CDA Miami, Casa de Alabanza, it's a bilingual church, um, would say that when you give everything to God, he gives you more in return. Wow. I'm about 20, almost 25 minutes. I don't want to make this any longer. I wanted to make this 15 minutes. But from there is where my life changed. Everything. Hey, is it perfect? No, I have problems like everybody else. I have failures like everybody else. I tell people I fail more than I succeed, but people only look at your success. From there, all I wanted, I still didn't have anything. All I wanted was to get closer to God and read and learn more about Him. So that's what I do. But then, wanted to be a police officer. 
and um, I failed before, before, all before this, and before I was a Christian. Um, I failed a polygraph without lying. And then I was already a Christian. I failed a psychological, which is like, what? And I found out it's because they want a certain way for you to answer. Later I found out how to answer them. So why didn't I become a cop? If I already knew, I talked to my cop friends. So what happens is I get, I get, um, I get hired for the Department of Corrections. Their success. I was put as a, as a section leader, which I was in charge of half the academy. There's two section leaders and one president. Um, in one class, I got tied the highest score never because I have ADD. And I've always had a hard time learning. I want to thank my friend Frank Savater. We would stay there with cards. This was 1990. Flashcards. Study. Passed it. Started working corrections. First change in my life. Making not great money, but a lot more. Spent 10 years working there. While I was working there, I decided to take martial arts more serious. Um, from about 80... About 88, 1988, I would say, on, I never stopped. I switched systems, and but I never stopped. So now I'm doing Hunger Kung Fu, and um, I get my black belt. I open my school, one of the most successful schools in South Florida. Was been in over 100-something TV shows. A lot of them are on this YouTube channel. Um... You saw written two books, have um, two men that are super successful. You know, we had my wife and I, two boys that are men that are super successful entrepreneurs today. Um, I can go on and on. I'm happily married. Do we ever argue? Sure, we do. Do we ever not agree on something? Sure, we don't agree. But divorce has never been in our mind because we know that's what Satan wants, separation. So, <clears throat> gives you back more. I had never gotten a black belt yet, even though I had been doing martial arts on and off a lot. I had never won a first place in a bodybuilding show. Okay, so 19, 19, 20, 2017, I win the South Florida Bodybuilding Championships, trained by my good friend, um, Mr. Junior USA, Sergio Pacheco. I like to give credit to people by the way. That's why I mentioned these names. And um, I won the overall over 60. Oh, before that, I tore my chest in a bench press contest in church for repetition. So, technically, I should have gone, ah, that's it. It's over. Mm -mm. My chest used to be my best body part. It's not anymore. But I still was able to win. Then, I decide two years later to compete in the Mr. Florida to qualify for the North America Bodybuilding Championships or Mr. North America. One of my goals was to compete national. Well, this is actually international, um, which I thought would never happen. And obviously might have never happened, even if I would have stayed bodybuilding. Um, national competitor at, you know, my not over 60. So now I go to Pittsburgh. Well, first I go to the Florida. There's no weight classes. I take second place. The guy that wins first literally was bigger and more cut up than me. Won it fairly. Um, actually, we became friends. We met at the North America, different divisions now. At the North America, I take second place in the lightweight bodybuilding. I also competed in the physique. Didn't place great because of it was only in two heights and I compete also in the um I'm sorry that was the classical physique in the physique which was with shorts actually for my age my best body part are my legs today which was my weakness when I was young so I told you a lot almost half an hour um I hope you guys stuck with it life before Christ failure didn't get much done 
life after Christ or me after Christ, you know. Um, he's given me back, like Apostle Bobby Cruz said, because he was a famous, is, is, what do you mean, was. He's in his mid-80s and he's still, he's about to retire and they're making a movie on his life. Um, he's a famous salsa singer, left everything, left the world, gave all his money to the church, and he would preach that to he preached so many incredible things but two were don't have premarital sex even if you know you're going to get married wait till you get married my wife and i did because then you're going to feel more confidence with each other and not think as much the other one might cheat and certain things and two how when you give it all to god he gives you way back man and i forgot to mention i can say that I've been, so I've written for like four different newspaper or magazines and local and national. I, I could say over a thousand articles either that I wrote or I've been on in newspapers and magazines. So life has been great to me. I'll be 66 this year. I am still a lot of injury. Right now I just hurt my back. Yesterday, I heard my back is doing better. I know it'll heal soon. And um, my shoulder was really bad, really bad. This one, the one with the torn chest for over a year, which is getting better. But I'm still healthy enough to train, teach martial arts. And, you know, do things that most people my age can't do. So I say, the secret of my success is number one. Christ when you live a Christian lifestyle and anti-aging which my book nine years ago is a lot about it's for everybody but it also has a lot of anti-aging and I did say in the book that I was going to be in better shape by 60 well I'm in better shape now which is not the best shape I've been in than I was when I wrote the book <clears throat> and obviously at 60 and 62 I competed in bodybuilding Getting in great shape. So, secrets to me, if there's no secrets, follow the Bible. It's not a sin to eat certain foods, but, and I do eat some of the foods that the Bible tells you not to eat, but not all the time. I try not to. But if you follow the Bible, it's eating habits. You follow the Bible, you know. If you're going to get married, get married. Don't have premarital, premarital sex. Don't cheat on your wife. You know, be faithful. Don't get divorced. Work it out. But both of you have to be Christians and, and, and know how to work it out. Man, that's longevity. That's why people tell me when I tell them that I'm going to be 66 that I don't look my age. And... I'm in better shape than people half, more than half my age. Follow Christ. In another video, I'm going to tell you how I started following Christ by faith, yet things that he revealed to me that I don't follow him by faith anymore. It's a fact that I know that Jesus Christ lived, died for our sins, resurrected, and Jesus Christ is God. Thank you, guys. It's almost 34 minutes. I hope you stayed this long. God bless.